Order. This is a meeting of the uh, City of Rancho Mirage City Council, Library and Observatory Board, the Housing Authority Board, and the City Council representing the Redevelopment Successor Agency. This is the regular meeting for Thursday, March 21st, 2024, and it is 1 p.m. We will begin with a flag salute, and I'll ask uh, Council Member Michael O'Keefe to please lead us in the flag salute. Please salute our flag. Ready to begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, would the city clerk please take the roll? Certainly. Council Member Mulatto? Here. Council Member Marker? Here. Council Member O'Keefe? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Weil? Here. Mayor Downs? I'm here. Uh, next order of business will be our non-agenda public comments. So this is an opportunity for any member of the public to uh, speak for up to three minutes on any item that is not on our agenda. If you wish to speak to an agenda topic, please wait until that agenda topic is called. And please be mindful of the uh, clock on the podium uh, with respect to your three minutes. So I will ask the city clerk to please handle non-agenda public comments. Thank you. We received one speaker card from Wally Melendez. Uh, good afternoon, City Council, Administration, and we, the people. Getting back to my favorite subject here about no exhaust cars. If you do what I tell you to do, you can sit in your air conditioned car all day and keep cool and you won't be polluting the atmosphere like you do with your gasoline burning uh, cars. And of course, you know what I'm talking about. The <clears throat> FCEB uh, cars. No exhaust, no polluting the air with carbon monoxide. The fuel cell does not burn gasoline. It's a chemical reaction between hydrogen and oxygen. And, and the only byproduct is a few drops of water. So you can sit in your car all day with the air conditioner on it, and you won't be poisoning the atmosphere. You can go to your grocery store and leave your car running and keep it cool and you won't be poisoning the atmosphere while you're doing the shopping. And I don't know if you all have heard of, well, I know you have. Greta Thunberg and El Gore, two very famous people in the world. They, 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 they uh, do or they uh, propose everything that I'm saying right now. And, and they travel all over the world and try to convince everybody like I'm trying to do. And speaking of that, since the city of Rancho Mirage has a surplus, what you call a reserve, of about $70 million, what I know about the chargers, the hydrogen chargers, you can put one up for less than $1 million. So, so I'm suggesting very strongly to the city of Rancho Mirage to appoint somebody from, from this group to, to be in charge of that uh, 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 project. Somebody must be in charge of that project. And by the way, Riverside, the city of Riverside has a, a charger, what I'm talking about. And it's been up there for, for years. But Riverside, uh, Riverside is, what, uh, 80, 90 miles from here? So, so it's too far. And there's plenty of room. There, I, I know of a place in Cathedral City where you can put this thing up and it's already got the building there. I bet you can get that guy that owns that, 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 that lot to just give it to you so you can put that charger on there. Thank you, Wally. 
That was the only speaker card. Is there anyone else in the audience who would like to speak on something that is not on the agenda? That was the only speaker. Thank you, Christy. Okay, we will move on to council and board member comments. We'll move from my uh, left to my right today. So we'll start with uh, council member O'Keefe. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, first, I hope everyone checks out the new pickleball courts at Community Park. Um, they're beautiful and they're already very popular. So compliments to Fred Strook and the Parks and Trails Commission and to my friend Ryan, who's usually here and the team for doing a, a job well done. Uh, this is a busy time of year. There are too many events for me to list, but I hope all of you know to sign up for the Rancho Mirage News Alert, which is delivered directly into your email so you can be sure you don't miss out on anything that you might enjoy. However, there is one event that I'd like to mention because it's uh, dear to my heart. This Saturday, March 23rd, the City Cultural Commission sponsors the 11th Annual Artist Studio Tour from 10 to 4. And for one day, the library is transformed into this great art gallery uh, featuring the work of more than 30 Rancho Mirage artists. And you'll see paintings and sculpture and jewelry and textiles and glass works and stationery and gifts uh, and more. The admission is free, but you're going to want to buy something, so you should probably bring uh, a credit card. Um, then some of the artists there have opened up their studios for you to go to their home, see their studios, see how they make the art that you like. Uh, the admission to this is also free, and so you can visit one of them or all of them. It's a great way to spend an hour or a whole day. So if art is the food that nourishes your soul, this is the event for you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. A few nights ago, the Indigo Rolls-Royce dealership in the heart of the desert welcomed guests to an evening of elegance and prestige, and attendees were greeted with the glimmer of luxury cars lined up in their sleek designs complementing our surrounding Rancho Mirage landscape. The ribbon-cutting ceremony marked a new chapter for Rolls-Royce, with guests mingling amidst champagne toasts and hors d'oeuvres, celebrating the arrival of unparalleled craftsmanship and sophistication to our city. Also this last weekend, attending the pickleball court ribbon cutting last weekend for the city of Rancho Mirage was an exciting community building experience. The newly inaugurated courts buzzed with enthusiasm as players eagerly anticipated the chance to test them out. The city's commitment to promoting healthy activities and fostering social connections among residents was highlighted with a host of local players present. As the ribbon was ceremoniously cut by Mayor Downs, applause filled the air, marking the beginning of a new era for pickleball enthusiasts in Rancho Mirage. And as you've noticed, the town is at full speed right now. The BNP Paribas Tennis Tournament, which spanned uh, a very exhilarating two weeks, transformed our desert oasis into a bustling hub of excitement, of which I had the pleasure of attending several day and evening sessions. The event drew tennis enthusiasts from far and wide, filling our hotels to capacity and infusing the region with a vibrant energy. As spectators cheered on their favorite players, the tournament not only showcased world-class athleticism, but also brought a significant boost to the local economy, solidifying its status as a premier sporting event in our community. I'd like to express our never-ending gratitude to Larry Ellison, who is not only the owner of the BNP, but also our former resident and owner of one of Rancho Mirage's top luxury resorts, Sensei. And while we're talking about fitness and health, it's going to be a beautiful week, and if you have the chance, try to swing by our community park. On Fridays, we have complimentary yoga, or you can shop at the Fresh Vegetable Farmer's Market. And lastly, the highlighted anticipated seniors golf tournament, known as the Gallery Classic, is set to take place at Mission Hills Country Club in Rancho Mirage next week. This prestigious event promises exhilarating matches and top-notch talent as seasoned golfers showcase their skills on our greens. Residents are encouraged to come out and watch, soaking in the atmosphere and excitement of professional golf in our own backyard. Don't miss this opportunity to witness thrilling competition and support your favorite players at Mission Hills Country Club. 
Thank you, Meg. Mayor Pro Tem Weil. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> uh, pickleball certainly is the topic du jour uh, after uh, the opening this past uh, weekend. Uh, pickleball is a game that blends aspects of table tennis, badminton, and tennis, and is becoming more and more well-liked worldwide due to its accessibility, inclusivity, and just simply a lot of fun. And now, right here in our city, the Rancho Mirage Community Park hosted the grand opening of its very own pickleball courts on Saturday. As you can see, the mayor was there. Um, he showed off his, uh, uh, maybe I'm stretching a little bit when I say skills. <laughs> Uh, in any case, it was a great time uh, for, for our city and all of the participants. Um, here, individuals of all ages and skill levels may join to play, compete, and connect. The Rancho Mirage Community Park uh, boasts a variety of amenities, including tennis and pickleball courts, and not the least of which I will say is our world-class amphitheater. As you may be aware, pickleball has become increasingly popular. In 23, the Sports and Fitness Industry Association named pickleball the fastest growing sport in America for the third year in a row. At the City Council on May 4th, 23, the Parks and Trails Commission proposed converting two of the tennis courts into eight new pickleball courts. Following staff recommendations, data analysis, and enthusiastic public support with approximately 13 favorable comments, the City Council approved unanimously the conversion of the tennis courts at a cost of approximately $97,000 over a two, month, two and a half month period. My sincere gratitude goes out to everyone, and I mean everyone, who helped make this project possible, including the committed Parks and Trails Commission volunteers and the city employees who assisted with funding and court planning. Here was another example of our Public Works Department that did an extraordinary job making this transition and if you go out there, you'll be as pleased as anyone. The launch of these courts is evidence of our de dedication to building a thriving and dynamic community. We hear when our constituents talk to us about the needs in our city. Here's another example of a need that we heard and we were motivated and immediately made a change. We understand the value of offering opportunities for recreation and physical exercise, not just for the sake of fitness, but also for the well-being of our residents and the sturdiness of our community ties. This is the sort of social activities that frankly bind a community. Uh, it's extremely important from a physical and psychological standpoint to be able to communicate with your fellow residents. So again, I, I thank everyone involved in this conversion. It's a great addition to the city and kudos to all. Thank you very much, Mayor. Thank you, Ted. So on the other side, thank you for those photos. On the other side of the net for me was Fred Strook, who is the chairman of the Parks and Trails Commission and the uh, Parks and Trails Commission did lead the charge in uh, converting those courts. And so Fred and I played one point and he may have moved faster than me, Ted, but I did win the point. Yes, you did. <laughs> yeah, I will acknowledge that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, uh, Council Member Mulatto. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Well, I echo my colleagues' um, comments on pickleball. Uh, it was a wonderful morning, and I'm, I'm thrilled for the community. I'd like to give special thanks to the Coachella Valley Symphony Orchestra. They call Rancho Mirage home at our amphitheater for their beautiful concert as part of our 50th um, celebration featuring singer Dave Demiani, 
who honored um, our, our late resident, Frank Sinatra, with a beautiful rendition, series of, of very popular songs from the Great American Songbook. It was a sold out crowd, even though the event was free. The, the place, there wasn't a seat in the place. And it, it, was, it was very special on many, many levels. I wanna have special thanks to our marketing department and our public works department. Um, they had a very busy day on Saturday, and especially uh, Haley Tice, who was busy wiping off all the rainwater from the, the seats that our guests were going to be uh, sitting at that night. They worked very, very hard and were most grateful. It was a wonderful celebration. Today, I had the honor of being principal for a day at Rancho Mirage High School, and I met with Principal Teresa Haga, and she is a longtime friend of about 25 years. And uh, I remember Teresa is a physics teacher at Palm Springs High School, and she, now she is Dr. Teresa Hager. And I had a wonderful tour of Rancho Mirage High School. Uh, we toured the culinary department. We went to a, a, a social studies class. We went to a speech class, uh, the music department. Um, we went into AP Calculus, and I quickly went back, had a flashback from when I took calculus, and my carotid arteries were shutting off because <laughs> I was so glad that the students didn't uh, play stump the uh, council member. I did get a couple answers right, but I couldn't wait to get back into the art area. And uh, we also went and traveled to Art 1 and 2 uh, classrooms, and th they just produced... I was just so impressed with their creativity and skill in in their whether it was painting or it was the crayon or the uh, the pencil artwork, a lot of which will be featured at tomorrow night's cultural commission event uh, artist studio at the library. And I encourage you to see what our students are creating. Um, it was a special day, and I think one of the takeaways I have from my visit to the high school today was the wonderful collaboration and uh, integration that the, the students have, the connectivity that the students have with their teachers. You know, um, I, I've been around a lot of classrooms in my old days of working at City of Cathedral City, and you go into a classroom, there's always kids cutting up or being distracted, and I... Today it was very, very special in how they're working with the teacher and the teacher is working with the students. I know that happens on a day-to-day -day basis, but the dialogue that was, um, that was exchanged and the ideas and the creativity, it was, it was a very, uh, very nice experience. Most people don't also know that Ranch Mirage High School has a very large um, community of students that are on the poverty level come from other communities and, and attend uh, Ranch Mirage High School. They also have a very large special needs department. Um, spectacular work that the teachers are engaging with their students and it, it did bring a tear to my eye. Um, we're very fortunate to have Ranch Mirage High School here in our city and I encourage anyone to support uh, the high school in any manner that they can. Thank you. Thank you, Lynn. Uh, so I do. Ha I, I have some comments also today. So uh, a couple of weeks ago at our last council meeting, our city manager did a great job of outlining an issue with respect to a traffic relief plan that is proposed by uh, Riverside, the Riverside County Transportation Commission uh, that involves uh, levying a 1% uh, sales tax to support the uh, traffic relief plan. And I wanted to follow up and make a couple of comments about that today because I think it's a very important issue and I think we need to educate the public about the issue. So Riverside County Transportation Commission plans a traffic relief plan. Here's how you can learn about the traffic relief plan. Go to the RCTC website and on the very first page of the website, you'll see the traffic relief plan. You can push a button, download it and learn all about uh, what uh, RCTC plans to do. Um, now. This is a very important plan. It's critical for the economy, for the future of our valley. Um, and uh, it is the case that uh, they've done a survey which indicates that about 60% of the voters or more in the Coachella Valley favor the plan and favor the possibility of, a, uh, of the 1% sales tax. But here's the rub. So the Coachella Valley, uh, the RCTC did a survey of Coachella Valley voters. 
And what they discovered, as I mentioned a moment ago, is that about 60% of the voters are, seem to be in favor of this plan. But the top two priorities that the voters placed on what they wanted RCTC to do with the funds raised by this traffic relief plan and the 1% uh, sales tax is to maintain our local roads in better working order and to fill potholes. That's what they said. More than 90% said that they want those two things done. Here's the problem. 100% of those sales tax dollars are set to go to CBAC, the, the Coachella Valley um, Association of Governments. Now, the issue there is when it comes to maintaining our local roads and filling our potholes, CBAC doesn't do that. We do. The Public Works Department in this city does. Now, that doesn't quite make sense to me when 100% of the, do of the dollars raised go to CVAG, but most of the people said that the two prim primary issues they wanted addressed were local roads and potholes. How does that work? That doesn't quite make sense to me. And it's important for the pu public to be aware of this. So I'm not suggesting that this isn't a good thing to do with respect to all of the um, uh, all of the issues that uh, uh, that CBAG and RCTC proposed to address uh, through the traffic relief plan. But I am suggesting that it's probably good if we find some way to chop off some portion of those sales tax dollars to help us do in this city and in the other cities in this valley that the voters said they wanted us to address. Our local roads, filling potholes, and I don't understand why we can't come to some solution to this problem. And I think we probably will with CBAG. Anyway, I wanted to make sure that you're all aware of that. I encourage you to read the traffic relief plan, and I encourage you to do whatever you think you can do uh, to uh, make sure that we get our equitable and equitable distribution of the sales tax dollars to be raised. Okay, we will move on to um, City Mayor. I'm sorry. M Mr. Mayor, I would like to just add to, add to your final comments. Sure. Um, as your commissioner on the Riverside County Transportation Commission, and this will be coming before us next month um, on a major vote, what you are referring to, this was established, 100% of the money going to CVAG back in 2020 with the previous members who sat on the Riverside County Transportation Commission. Nothing has changed in the plan, but our city manager is working tirelessly with other government agencies in the Valley to make sure that we will receive a portion of these funds. Having said that, um, it will all play out in the coming months. Sure. Uh, yeah, my point, again, is that it, uh, some, in some way we need to find a more equitable distribution of the funds. I don't care if it comes directly from that 1% sales tax or if there is some other method of distribution from CBAC. But since the public said that those were the two issues that they wanted addressed, in this most recent survey that the RCTC conducted. It doesn't make any sense to me that we don't find a way to get that done with some of these funds, either from this sales tax to be raised and to be voted on in November, or some other method of distribution from CBAG. Anything else? Okay, thanks everybody. Uh, we'll move on now to city manager comments. Uh, no comments today, Mr. Mayor, so I'll go ahead and jump to the consent calendar. Uh, so Mayor and Council, you have four items for consideration. Uh, item number one is to waive the full reading of all ordinances introduced or adopted pursuant to this agenda. Item number two is to approve the March 7th, 2024 regular meeting minutes. Item number three is to receive and file the annual board commission reports. And item number four are demands. Uh, before we go to council uh, for comments or action, if any member of the public wishes to speak on the consent calendar, now is the time to do so. We didn't receive any speaker cards, so is there anyone out there that wants to speak on the consent calendar? Seeing none, we'll go ahead and close the public comment period, and I'll return this to you, Mr. Mayor. Okay, do we have any council member comments on the um, consent calendar? Uh, no, Mr. Mayor, I'll move to approve the consent calendar. And I'll second. Uh, motion and second, please vote. Motion carries, 5-0. Thank you, Christy. Okay, we will move on to the rest of the agenda public hearing. Uh, there is only one item on the agenda, um, one additional item on the agenda, and it is a public hearing. The subject is zoning text amendment case number ZTA24-0001, uh, repealing ordinance number 860. Senior planner PR, Pilar Lopez will deliver the staff report and Pilar. 
I understand that yesterday was a fairly special day. Pilar was married yesterday. Oh. Best wishes to you, Pilar. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Live long, happy marriage. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. For the record, we didn't force her to come to work today. That was our <laughs> choice. <laughs> no. Thank you. And good afternoon, members of City Council. City staff is presenting the consideration of zoning tax amendment case number ZTA 24-0001 to repeal Ordinance 860. Ordinance 860 introduced Rancho Mirage Municipal Code Section 17.10.014, which limits the amount of office uses up to 25% in certain commercially zoned areas. Commercially zoned areas are within the general commercial, CG, community commercial, CC, and neighborhood commercial, CN zoning districts. Specific plans with districts that have underlying commercial zoning are also subject to the ordinance. If the ordinance is repealed, this would remove the office restriction in place and could allow tenant spaces to better respond to market demand, which will allow property owners to potentially secure tenants to spaces that have long-term vacancies. Pursuant to the provisions of the California Environmental Quality Act, CEQA, Section 15378, the proposed action is not considered a project under CEQA. On February 24, 22nd, 2024, the Planning Commission recommended that the City Council A. Introduce and adopt ordinance next in line, repealing Ordinance 860 and deleting Rancho Mirage Municipal Code Section 17.10.014, Revenue Generating Uses in Commercial Zoning Districts. Staff has not received written public comments for this item. This concludes staff's presentation. I'd be happy to answer any questions City Council may have. Thank you. Thank you, Pilar. And I'll ask the City Clerk to handle uh, public comment on this item. Thank you. So now is the time for any public testimony on this public hearing item. I did not receive any speaker cards. Okay. For number five? That's okay. 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 Thank you. I, yeah, I'm sorry. That's okay. I was just raising my hand just to talk. Uh, anyway, uh, my name is Brad Anderson. I currently live in the city of Ransom Mars. I think this is awesome. Anything that gives the property owners more control over their properties uh, is great, up to and including possibly drive throughs And that's just a thought of mine. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak? That was the only. Thank you, Christy. Uh, any uh, council member comments on this item? If not, I'll ask for a motion. I'll be happy to make the motion, Mr. Mayor, that the City Council approve and introduce ordinance number next in order. First reading, repealing ordinance number 860 and deleting Rancho Mara's Municipal Code section 17.10.014, revenue generating uses in commercial zoning districts. And I'll second. We have a motion and a second, please vote. Motion carries 5-0. Thank you, Christy. We are about to recess into closed session. Before we do that, I will ask the uh, city attorney to please um, summarize the items that we will discuss in closed session. Thank you, Mayor. We'll be convening in a closed session for the four items before you on the agenda. The first being conference with legal counsel existing litigation pursuant to government code section 54956.9D1. Case name being vacation rental owners and neighbors of Ranch Mirage et al. v. City of Ranch Mirage et al. Case number CVRI 2100368. The second item being conference with legal counsel existing litigation pursuant to government code section 54956.9D1. Case name vacation rental owners and neighbors of Rancho Mirage v. City of Rancho Mirage. Case number CVPS 2200167. Third item being public employee performance evaluation pursuant to government code section 54957, public employee being the city manager slash executive director. The fourth item being conference with labor negotiator regarding unrepresented employee pursuant to California government code section 54957. City representative will be myself, Colin Kirkpatrick, the city attorney. The unrepresented employee will be the city manager slash executive director. Thank you, Colin. And we are now recessed into executive, into closed session. Okay, we have completed um, 
closed session. We are back into uh, open session. Uh, and we do have one more action item on the calendar. Action item number six, consider approving proposed revisions to city manager, executive director of affiliated agencies employment agreement. And I will now turn it over to the city attorney to report on closed session and report on this item. Thank you, Mayor. First, there was no reportable action taken during closed session. With respect to item number six, the before you, a proposed amendment to the city manager's employment contract to increase his base salary to 340,000 and increase his deferred compensation to $20,000 a year. Uh, that item is before you and I would now return it back to you, Mayor, to open up the public comment period. Okay, I'll ask the uh, city clerk to conduct public comment on this item. Thank you, we did receive one speaker card, Brad Anderson. Thank you, Brad Anderson, City of Ansel Morales. I should have sat closer. Uh, again, I, no, not again, but I wanted to speak on this topic because I, I, would, I assumed it would have been part of the closed session topic, but you had no reportable action on a closed session. And the wage increase and benefit increase, I had no prior knowledge of that. I don't know if that was a staff report or not. I did see it. Uh, I don't, I, so I really can't comment if it's a, a gross overpayment or or maybe the man manager is not making enough money compared to other cities. Uh, so I'm at a disadvantage because the staff report has no information containing this, and your closed session topics had no reportable action. So I'm confused, and that's all I have. Thank you. That was the only speaker card. Is there anyone else in the audience who would like to speak? That was the only speaker. Thank you, Christy. Do I have any council comments on this item? Uh, Mayor, I'll, I'll merely make a comment that the council discussed the subject and uh, felt that the uh, merit increase was more than justified. And uh, I think uh, uh, I speak for most of us that we feel that it was a, a <clears throat> an appropriate increase given uh, the level of service the city, city manager has provided over the last year, so thank you. Uh, as well as the complications yet to come due to development that's gonna come in this city in the years to come. So uh, yes, uh, I agree with you, Ted. Thank you very much for those comments. All right, uh, may I have, uh, I guess we're gonna to need to vote. How, how are we gonna do this? Do we? Uh... Uh, before the vote, I apologize for the record. I should have stated that pursuant to the Brown Act provisions, the city council uh, pursuant to the labor negotiations did present the city manager the informal offer outlined previously which was uh, accepted by the city manager, subject to final action by the city council on the action calendar. Uh, with respect to the vote, I would turn it over to the city clerk to handle um, a normal roll, uh, vote. So we just need a, a motion. We need a motion. Mm -hmm. um, okay, uh, Ted, would you like to make the motion? I'd be more than pleased. <clears throat> uh, I'd like to make a motion that the city manager's compensation uh, be increased to a figure of 330,000 yeah. per year. 40. 40. Uh, excuse me, 340, excuse me. 340,000 per year uh, plus $20,000 deferred compensation uh, effective immediately. Do I have a second? I'll second. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Please vote. Motion carries 5-0. Thank you, Christy. Congratulations, Mr. City Manager. Thank you. This meeting is adjourned. <laughs>